Hey guys, it's our Arcade, and I'm back today with uh, another console hack video. So, uh, my SNES, I've been kind of prepping that for RGB, and so I can hook it up to my console tower. So, I got an S-Video right now, and I had no controllers, so I went on eBay, and I found these controllers for, what, $2 and change a piece, so I ordered two of them, they come from China. They look like Super Nintendo controllers, you know, the logo's missing right there, and, you know, there's nothing on the back where you'd have a sticker. You know, the shape is identical. The colors, they got the colors pretty darn identical. But, uh, yeah, this is really not a quality controller. Uh, it's very, very light. Lighter than a, a standard SNES controller would be. Um, the button pushes are a little bit firmer than an SNES controller would be. The quality of these buttons um, are not, you know, quite the same shape. The, the contours are not quite exactly the same. The pad, definitely not the same. It's got a really firm push. Um, you know, and these L and R buttons, they feel pretty good, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, so for $2, it's a Super Nintendo controller. But how does it work? Well, I guess I, I plugged it in. Uh, the other end of this, I would say, barely, barely fit into the SNES. I mean, I really had to cram that thing into the console. Um, but it, it just barely fit. And then it played, it played, eh, it played okay. I mean, it's it gets the job done, but it is by sure nowhere near as good as a regular pad. Um, so, it, you know, I felt like the responsiveness on this was a little bad. It was kind of poor because it's such got such a heavy press. Uh, the buttons seem to be okay. I played I played around a Super R type with it, and I said okay. Well, I didn't buy it to play it with this. To be honest with you, I bought this so I could hook it up to my trusty Neo Geo controller using my uh, JAMA format. DB15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these five screws here and we'll open this sucker up and we'll see how easy it is to hack and hopefully this will be a quick easy job. So I'll be right back. Okay so I've taken all five screws out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, gently lift off the back here and inside we got a pretty small circuit board. You know it's not too bad considering it could be a lot worse for two dollars. Let's go ahead and uh, unwrap this little wire here. The wire is definitely another cheap feature of this. It doesn't feel nearly as sturdy. I'm going to pull my L and R buttons here. I just don't want to lose any of these pads. You can see my bench is not exactly tidy. But I know where everything is. Alright, there it is. So there's the little PCB. And uh, I can see some very good news. Looks like there is a really... Let me get this to focus. Come on, focus, focus. There we go. Check it out, right there. X, A, B, Y. Got four pads right there. I'm going to go ahead and expose the wire on those. You can use a special type of eraser to do that, which I don't own, so I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to just kind of very gently scrape away the upper layer. And then it helps to have some flux, which I don't. Uh, if you have some flux, you can cover this in flux and then kind of flow some solder on there and then boom, you're done. So there's those four. I can pull a ground right there. There's GND. And, oh, even easier. There's already solder points for L and R. So this is going to be a pretty easy job. And like I said, I, I do this to DB15. DB15 is kind of like the JAMA Super Gun. Oh, great, just dropped that. Grand, uh, standard, and I buy these connectors on eBay. I get them from China. So, like, there's the males, and then I got, I got some females left. So, we're gonna do one female today. And uh, the last time I did this, I did it with an Xbox 360 controller. I just drilled a little hole in the back, and I just ran a port, and I just had the connector on the controller. That way, it stayed contained. You could still use the controller, uh, yet it was hacked to plug into the JAMA. So. I don't know how I'm going to do that with this one, with the, the way the wires are. I might be able to run a really thin wire. Um, going through the back is not a question. So I might not be able to do it with this one. Maybe the pad will just be useless, but it will just end up being like a, a box to contain it. So, All right, well, I'm going to get to work here, and I'll cut back, and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so back. It's taken me about a little under 15 minutes to wire everything up. The hardest part was stripping these stupid wires. I, I start off with a... A conductor shielded cable uh, that has, I think, about a 24 gauge wire in it. 
and uh, you know I didn't have any flux or anything but these little baby pads right here all I did was you know I tried scratching it away a little bit found out I really didn't need to all I did was heat it up a little add a little solder and it kind of cooked itself on there so the solder stayed real good so all the wires are hooked up I got XB or YXAB start select R L and then up down left right over here so I got all the controls I need and interestingly enough there's an extra pad right there that says fm i know it's upside down but maybe you can see that i ah, was kind of and it goes right into the little chip that they've got covered up no idea what that does fm so maybe if you know put a comment below it's kind of interesting that that's just kind of there but this pad has been super easy to work with not all pads are this easy but usually if you get them from china they're pretty easy uh the original pads were a lot harder to deal with because they always had you know one problem or another and you had to sometimes drill your own holes this nothing like that at all just solder to the pads they already give you and they they stay on real good you know i'm tugging on these and they're on good normally i'd put a little super glue on this to just kind of keep it from ever coming off so next i'm going to kind of tidy this up right here i'm going to actually start wiring my uh, db15 and then uh, i'll cut back and we'll we'll test it on the controller right here and make sure everything works Okay, so I'm done soldering. I got uh, my DB15 here all wired up. Now normally I'd put little heat shrinks on there to protect it from shorting and so forth, but I'm flat out of tiny heat shrink and I don't want to postpone this. I just want to get it done. But, you know, these wires are small enough where you can solder them. They're not really going to touch. Um, you know, I decided to run all the wires through the front of the controller, right through the uh, select button. So the idea is I can still put the controller back together. I can glue the pad and the buttons on there. So it looks like a controller, but it's just an enclosure. won't be able to actually use it. I could make the L and the R buttons probably work still, but that's probably about it. Um, I just got through testing some of these. Uh, I just quickly hooked up my Neo Geo uh, controller right here. That's actually a, you know, you know the deal with this thing I made years ago. Uh, it's a PC controller when they did the Neo Geo X. Uh, it's all starting to fade off. And drop some solder on there nicely. But I like this controller. I mean, it's small and portable, and I'm used to playing it. It fits my hand, so I hook everything up to this. It's only got four buttons, but rarely do I play games that usually use all six buttons. Uh, if I need to use six buttons, I just change it to a different controller. All my controllers are wired exactly the same, so I don't really need to worry about that. Um, so yeah, I, I, everything works. I just basically put, you know, one to ground here and then one on a, a like a, a value here like start and then I'll push my button and then, you know I hear my meter beep then I know the connection's good so I did all that so now I'm going to put this back together take it upstairs and we'll try it out on the uh, the monitor and make sure it all works okay so we're finally back and it's the moment of truth I got my Neo Geo controller set up got my LaCroix and I got the SNES hack pad so everything's wired up only one thing left to do and test it out. Now I'm playing this on S video, it's not RGB yet, so please excuse, it is not perfect. Alright, that's a good sign, start works. Select works. Alright, skip that. Alright, up, down, left, right, that's good. Shoot. That would be B. A doesn't do anything. I don't know if it's supposed to. There's... Whoa! Whoops! Hard to play with one hand and test at the same time. Alright, so that would be Y, rapid, and X, rapid. So the only thing that's not doing anything is my A button. But I don't know if it does anything in this game. It might, and then maybe I didn't wire something right. But uh, I'd say this is pretty much a success. I got all four directions and three out of four of my buttons. I can't test the L and R. Actually, I can probably do... Yeah, they don't do anything. I can still use L and R on the pad if I really needed to. Yeah, I'd say this is pretty much a success. And this is great, because I haven't played Smart Type in a long time. I picked this one up uh, really, really cheap on eBay. Just a couple dollars for Super Famicom. Great shmup. I gotta get Gradius 3 now. Well, that's it. That's how you hack a, a gamepad into Gemma, well, not really Gemma, but you know, Super Gun format. If you're looking for the pinout for this, 
check out a Neo Geo pin out and then add Super Gun to the search. You'll get a, you know, it's a 15 pin pin out. It's going to have 5 volts, a coin button, which I use for select. And then, um, you know, you get six buttons plus four directionals a common ground you can get a five volt line so if i wanted to run lighted buttons or something like that i'd have five volts so that's why i chose to do the super gun pinout and i do it on all my consoles so and i kind of like putting the uh you know keeping the controller it's kind of nice i can wrap it up and put it back here uh normally i do these big bulky boxes but i think i'm going to stop doing those if i you know can just do the controllers you know i don't really need to do two controllers i can just do one for myself so that's it for today's video, and I'll see you next time.